today we made us a delicious turkey. Uh, she is moist. Me and Chris just ate some with dinner. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of the most moist turkey breasts we've had off of a whole turkey ever. And it has the best flavor. This turkey uh, was stuffed with herbs and spices and you can taste those in the turkey meat you really can it is absolutely delicious we're going to get started with this recipe out of our second cookbook you're going to want to use this recipe this year for thanksgiving you're going to have a delicious thanksgiving dinner let's get started hey y'all it's tammy with collard valley cooks chris is videoing we are making a delicious turkey today. This turkey recipe is in our volume one cookbook. It is amazing. You can roast your turkey or you can bake it and then roast it just to brown it. We are actually going to do a full roast today. And for the first uh, part of roasting, we will have it breast down so that all the juices can run down into the breast meat because you don't want your breast meat to be dry. Now, today we're going to be using, of course, our turkey. This is a smaller turkey because I'm making it for us. It's 15 and a half pounds. We've got a pork belly. These things are kind of expensive. I'm only going to use a portion of this pork belly. Um, we're going to be using lemon today to rub down the inside of our turkey. We're going to be using green onion, garlic, rosemary, thyme, and a fresh, just regular onion. I love McCormick poultry seasoning. A lot of people say, don't you use sage in your dressing? Well, the uh, first ingredient in poultry seasoning is thyme. The second is sage, so it has plenty of sage in it. We're gonna be using a little apple juice, a little butter, and that's pretty much it. We're gonna get this thing in the oven. Now, on our recipe, you'll see that um, in the video. I'm gonna do a clip for you in there so look at that now in that recipe it's going to give you the directions it's going to tell you to clean it and what to stuff it with then it's going to tell you to roast it by the roasting directions uh, on your turkey our turkey is 15 and a half pounds this tells you plainly which method you're using we're using the roasting method and so you just look right here, make sure you thaw it, but refrigerating th thaw time is for this size four to five days. For the roasting time is three and three quarter hours to four and a quarter. So we're going to roast this three, I'm going to roast this for three hours and 15 minutes. Then we're going to flip it over, turn up the heat and get it pretty and brown. So we're going to get started. I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious Thanksgiving turkey ever in your oven. This is a no, no antibiotic turkey. I've never made one before, but I got it because it was one that was already out and thawed when, when we went to the grocery store. So you're just going to unwrap your bird. I am going to place this in the trash can. Shake it so it maybe it won't drip on its way. Then, it, with this bird, she is already tied up on her legs, and I think she has a roasting pin in her so that you know when she gets good and done. I'm gonna stick it down in her better. That'll pop out. Now, the first thing you're going to do is get your giblets out of the turkey. And I'm actually going to place these giblets right here in this pot because I'm going to make giblet gravy. I'm going to throw this away. So if you'll look, those giblets were just stuffed right here in her extra skin. Down here, we have her opening. They've got her tied up, so I'm not going to mess with that. That's real nice and convenient for me. We're going to get the turkey neck out of her cavity, and then we're just going to rinse her good. 
It's the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to pat her dry. There's no need to wash my hands yet because I'm going to be patting her dry. Let me get over here and get paper towels. And I'm just not going to touch the top. Because we have to dry her in order for everything to stick to her good. So get you a bunch of paper towels and dry the turkey. You can try to dry it in the sink, but the only thing is um, it's so wet from rinsing her out. It's hard to get her dry in the sink. Now for your giblets, what you need to do is cover them with water. You can rinse some of that blood off if you want to. But cover them with water. And we're gonna be using some meat tenderizer. If you use meat tenderizer when you simmer these giblets, you're just gonna simmer them a good hour Put some chicken bouillon in there, uh, some onion in there, and a little meat tenderizer in it. And let it simmer, and then they're going to just fall apart done. So they're going to be really good in your giblet gravy. Uh, they're not going to be tough pieces of meat if you use the meat tenderizer. I'm going to show you what kind I use. You want to get McCormick meat tenderizer, and I get the one that is unseasoned. So it's very salty and it's white. This is very salty, so don't add salt to whatever you're cooking when you're using meat tenderizer. We're just gonna chop these up in big pieces to go inside our turkey. And maybe we'll put some around the edge. We've got thyme and rosemary. And these are just going in the turkey, so it doesn't matter that you, you know, you don't have to chop them up little or anything like that. You're just gonna stuff her with them. Same way with the garlic. What we might do with the garlic, though, is smash it so that it has plenty of flavor inside the turkey. And we'll do that. So we're going to smash up a few cloves of garlic. Now, my mama didn't go to all this trouble when she baked turkey. Most of the time, she just seasoned it and baked it. But I will tell you, this is good stuff, and you will not be disappointed if you run and get these few ingredients from the grocery store. Look at that pretty lemon. Beautiful. Right from our neighbor's yard. All right, you're gonna need some poultry seasoning, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up. You're gonna need a stick of butter or margarine for the inside of your bird. And you're going to need a cup of apple juice. And I'm going to go ahead and get all this ready so that once I'm touching the bird, I'm not having to touch everything else. Let's cut this pork belly. I think that's a good enough piece for the, the size turkey we're making today. Now pork belly is pork on one side or the raw meat on one side, and then you have the fat on the other side, you're going to place this on your turkey, and it's going to put a lot of juice and good um, juices and oils into your turkey from this pork belly. So I'm gonna score it a little bit. This is the fat side. If you score it, it'll help that fat get down into the turkey meat. Now I'm going ahead and drying my bird a little bit more. And now that my hands are dirty, your hands are going to be dirty for a little while, we are going to open up the bird. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your lemon and you're going to squeeze it and rub it on the inside of the cavity. Make sure you get you a nice big one. This one's really big. I'm just going to leave that piece of lemon in there. I'm going to take half of my onion, place it in here, 
and a few pieces of garlic. Place them in there. I, all right, I've got a few pieces of garlic in the bird. Now we're gonna grab our herbs and our onion. And we're going to just take them and stuff them into the bird and really press them down in there and stuff for good, okay? And then finish it off with your onion and the rest of your garlic. And now we're going to try to slide a piece of butter into the bird. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put the whole piece of butter in there. I'm actually going to put some of it in between her in between her skin. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. What I do is I take her skin and you just gotta find the pocket and get through it. And once you're through it, then you can see that you can slide your hand down into the skin. Yes, it's like putting on a big glove. So, if you wanna make a good turkey, you take the time out to do these extra steps. And I'm gonna put this butter in here. And Okay, this is our pork belly. And I actually cut it smaller. I really had too big of a piece. This stuff's expensive, so there ain't no sense in wasting it because we're just flavoring the turkey with it. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it in the breast. Now, she is going to cook breast side down for the majority of her cooking time. Um, now what we're gonna do is that pork belly is underneath her skin. We are gonna take poultry seasoning and we're gonna cover, coat her in poultry seasoning and we're gonna flip her upside down to, to roast the first cooked period. All right, so we're gonna take our poultry seasoning and we're just gonna really put plenty on her. And then we're gonna flip her upside down. Oh, let's salt and pepper her. And if you, you want to throw some salt on the inside of her cavity, you can do that too. I didn't. Should have probably, but it's okay. Now we're going to flip her over so she's breast side down and do that all over again. All right, when you wash up after handling this bird, make sure you get all the way up your arms because you've had your arm in that cavity, in that skin. All right? Now on this side, we're going to season it with poultry seasoning. And remember, uh, Chris did mention that we may not have salted her on the inside of the cavity, but she's gonna have pork belly on her, which is salty. She's gonna have um, butter in her that is salted. And then we're salting the outside. And pepper. And she's got all those herbs inside of her. So I did make my pork belly a little smaller because I got some underneath her too. And <clears throat> we're gonna put this on top of it. So use the chart time on your turkey for your roasting time, but save the last 45 minutes for flipping your turkey, turning it up to 400 degrees to make your bird beautiful for carving on the table. This is 15 and a half pounds, so we're gonna cook it three hours and 15 minutes, breast side down. Now my roasting pan has a lid. And if you want to wrap your turkey good and slow cook it instead of roasting it like this and just baking it, then um, you can do that. I have the instructions in my cookbook for both types of cooking. All right, it's been three hours and 15 minutes. We're gonna take this out of the oven, put it on the countertop and flip it over. You wanna close your oven pretty quick so it doesn't cool completely off. You can see there's plenty of broth down in the bottom of this. Got that little bit of apple juice in it. Y'all see my dilemma? All right. Let's see if I can just get her over here in this pan. If I can, I might can turn her because she won't have that plate under her. It's quite iffy. Now we're going to try to roll her over. 
Red Rover, Red Rover. Let's roll right on over. More. She's kind of a mess. I heard her on the bottom. That's the pork belly sticking out of her uh -huh. breast. All right, we're going to put her up here. Because now she's got to get brown. She looks juicy, don't she? Mm -hmm. She smells awfully good. It really smells good. And there's going to be plenty of juice down in the bottom of this to baste her with. Now my spoon's messed up her skin, but that's just the way it is. If you don't cook them breast side down, they don't, they're not as juicy. So it's just better to do it that way. Oh, I'll put my pork belly back up. Well, no, I don't want to do that. We'll just, just leave it sit down. Oh, okay. And um, we're going to put her back in there. You just about have to get her out. I put her on something else to turn her over. All right, now we're going to brown her. We're going to turn the oven up to 400. And press start. And she's going to cook for 45 minutes, just like that, to get her nice and toasty. We'll see you in 45 minutes when we slice her and eat her. We got us some potatoes cooking, y'all know. I'm just making a turkey to show you guys how to make a turkey so I don't have dressing and all to go with it. So me and Chris are going to have some creamed potatoes and peas. But I'm going to get this turkey out of the oven. And we're going to let it sit a few minutes before we carve it. Looks delicious and it smells so good. Don't it, Chris? Mm -hmm. And we've got these giblets over here cooking too. She looks good. And look at all that nice broth we got with her. Good stuff. So what I like to do is slice my turkey and put it on a platter. I personally like to slice the turkey and put it on a platter before everybody gets to the Thanksgiving feast. And I take the drippings and I baste the turkey meat with it. Um, it's just good that way. And you can actually cover it and keep it warm up in the oven a warm if you want to before everybody gets there too. And you do want to boil them at least an hour, hour and a half, something like that, to get them good and tender for your giblet gravy. We will see you when we carve our turkey. See what we got here. We got a little stopper that did pop up when she was done. And me and Chris have just about ate all of the pork belly that was laying on the top of her. Because it was super good. This is a piece right here. A pork belly. That was under her skin. So that would be good to eat. Whoever gets that piece. Got a nice piece of something to eat. Alright, I'm just going to slice some of her breast meat. And let you see how it's looking. So we'll lay it right here on our serving plate. And she looks awfully juicy, don't she? So she looks good and juicy. It's not dry at all. But she's got a really pr pretty brown color. Did you get her color good, Chris? In the video? How good she looks. And typically, I do um, cut, I usually take the legs off and I just lay them on the plate. Yeah. Skin off. So you can put your turkey legs on the plate. Uh, she is moist. Me and Chris just ate some with dinner. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of the most moist turkey breasts we've had off of a whole turkey ever. And it has the best flavor. This turkey uh, was stuffed with herbs and spices, and you can taste those in the turkey meat. You really can. It is absolutely delicious. All right. 
Hope you've enjoyed watching how I make a turkey. Now remember, if you do cover your bird, that helps too. But now we just did roasting today. So you can do a full roast, which is what we did today, or you can do a roast bake. All right? Y'all have a wonderful day, and we thank you for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.